Jensen, a professor from the University of Texas. Thanks. When they uh, asked me to speak, they said they needed an academic expert. And uh, I said, well, I can't do that. Because you know what academic experts do. They get paid to come and tell you that your own experience is not real. <laughs> That's what academic experts And they do it with titles in front of their names and letters after their names. And I'm not interested in telling you that what you know isn't real. I'm just interested in validating what you all know from your own experience. <clears throat> Let me tell you a story about the local impact, which of course is the same basically all over the country. I had a student come in to, to explain to me why she had missed a couple of weeks of school and also to explain why she had been slow in telling me. And uh, turned out that she had had to go home, um, lives in another city, and had to go home. And I said, well, have a medical emergency, what happened? She said, no, my, my father got laid off. And as a result of that, they're in over their head on a mortgage and there was just family stress. She said, I just had to go home to, to help be part of the family. And I think that's the, the lived reality we can't forget, that when we hear politicians talk about statistics, when we hear economists talk about statistics, behind those statistics are real people. People whose lives are affected by the the greed and the predatory practices of corporations. And I want to make sure we always remember that. But, of course, to understand that, we have to understand not just the local, but the big picture. And it's quite clear that these corporations, uh, in some sense, we shouldn't be too hard on them because they're acting the way they're designed. They're predatory machines, and they're acting that way. And who are they predatory towards? Well, we're hearing about it today. They're predatory towards workers, especially those workers who are most vulnerable, especially undocumented workers, workers from other countries, workers they know they can cheat more effectively. They're predatory toward the consumers, especially those consumers who are most vulnerable, as it's been pointed out. First time home buyers, senior citizens, folks also who are perhaps not speaking English as a first language. So we see the way that these corporations operate. They operate as predators, which is the way this system is designed. And uh, we all know the answer to this. And I don't think I'm <coughs> revealing any secrets. The, the answer to solve the, the problem? Armed revolutionary violence. And I'd like to... <laughs> okay, some of you got the joke. Okay, that's not the answer. <laughs> For some of you, there's a couple hands, fists going up in the back, but on the assumption that we are not yet prepared for armed revolutionary violence, although from this group, I don't know. <laughs> There's a hope here, but um, we know what the answer is, and the answer is up on the stage around me. The answer is, of course, strong labor unions. Labor is international. It's really great to see the orange shirts out there and see the energy behind this particular union, and I just want to applaud the work you're doing. Thank you very much. by community groups. I live here in Austin, Texas, and I'm a strong supporter of the Workers' Defense Project. Emily, thanks for all the great work. Workers' Defense Project. And of course, folks who are rallying to protect homeowners, consumers, thanks for your presence here. It's really important. But I think in the end, we have to remember that we're dealing with one aspect of a system that is based not on human community solidarity and compassion, but is based on greed. And we know that the politicians of both parties are not going to be the ones to lead us out of that. As it's been pointed out, they're in the hands of lobbyists, not in the hands of people. And it is these kind of community groups working in solidarity with workers' groups that are, are the answer. If we're going to beat the exploitation that's built into the system, it's by taking power, not, excuse me, not by necessarily taking power from them, but as local organizers always remind us, by making power among ourselves. Thank you. Uh, Jake, if, if I can make a comment on the corporation. Uh, there's a, a very interesting video you can watch on YouTube. It's called The Corporation. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to, it's divided up into 23 chapters. It's kind of hard to find all the chapters. We've got a, a link to it from our homepage at homeownersoftexas.org. Uh, but what's unique about the corporation it, as an entity, it's not that necessarily that the CEO is, is out to screw people. He is actually doing his job. The CEO is incented and paid and, and expected to serve the interests of the stockholders. In fact, by law, they are supposed to serve the interest of the shareholders over the interest of society by law. Uh, decades ago, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, in, in a case of, about the, the corporations and corporate charters and things like that, they gave the corporation the rights of a person. So one of the things that this video uh, that the, the corporation does is, well, it asks, well, what kind of, if the corporation need, is treated legally like a person, what kind of person is it? And they had various different sociologists and psychologists uh, run through a, a, like a profile uh, questionnaire kind of, a, of thing, like you would ask a real person. And it came out, it, very solidly that the corporation behaves like a sociopath, behaves like a psychopath, does everything in its power, not intentionally to hurt society, but to save itself. Uh, so just think of that as to how that impacts lawmaking and how it impacts maybe the kind of role that we as citizens can play in influencing lawmaking. One problem that we see is, and, and it happened years ago, I retired from IBM after 30 years. Today, people going into the workforce tend to uh, switch entire jobs or careers every two or three years. Uh, so we don't have this lifelong employment and an employer investing in our education, our healthcare, and our retirement like we used to. Uh, we have moved to very short-term thinking, uh, where CEOs are measured and paid based on stock performance uh, and with that the the whole Wall Street and people's retirement funds that have moved into 401ks which are now very heavily on stock the policymakers have a very large incentive of of propping up Wall Street and they're also making short-term decisions uh, where a builder is cuts corners and makes short-term decisions in order to make profit this year or next year uh, but maybe uh, he's not even going to be, you know, that company may not even be in business uh, 15, 20 years from now. Where the, the homes surely aren't going to last 30 years like the mortgage, uh, <coughs> the people paying for them. Uh, so they, this long term versus short term is a very difficult problem. Uh, and, and I don't know that of, of an easy fix to that. I'd, I'd add that uh, media, getting media attention is, is uh, important. But the problem that we have today uh, uh, is a lot of the media outlets, they're, they're really struggling. You know, I mean, they're, they're, their business is going away and they're looking for as much advertising as they can. And on the Sunday section, what is the biggest ad revenue? It's homes, okay? So the new homes section, that they, the, the uh, <coughs> mainstream media, <coughs> I'm not sure is doing a neutral job in reporting on uh, home building issues because I see a lot of issues that they're not even covering or that they gloss over or that whatever. Uh, the problem is who else takes up that slap? Who, who does the investigative journalism? Well, if it's a nonprofit group like us, a consumer group, then that we're naturally biased. So if, if, if the people see in our reports or, or uh, uh, whatever, it, it, it's not as good as if it came from some unbiased source. So maybe academia. Uh, th there are some some folks that are uh, producing feature-length movies. There, there's one that's featuring Lenar that's going to be coming out within the next month or so. The, any media attention, I think, will will be good uh, as a step.